we're going to discuss some different substitution methods for solving differential equations, specifically two of them. The first method is called homogeneous. Actually, we could pronounce this either a homogeneous substitution or homogeneous. And I'm actually going to stick with the pronunciation of homogeneous because we're going to use this word in an entirely different sense later on when we talk about a type of differential equation. So to avoid confusion, I'll just pronounce it homogeneous when we're talking about using it in terms of substitution. And then we'll talk about Bernoulli's equation. There's other forms of substitution. They all work in basically the same manner, so I'll just stick to using these two methods. The question is, when do we use substitution methods? Before going to a substitution method, you would first check to see if the differential equation was separable. That is, if you could separate the variables and solve it that way. You would then check to see if it's linear, and then you can use the integration factor. You could also check to see if something is exact. If it fails all three of these, however, then you might want to turn to one of these substitution methods. This is an example of a homogeneous equation. How can I tell if it's homogeneous? Well, I would do the following check. This is similar to when you do checks for exact equations. I'm going to check if f of x t, that is x times t, comma y t, if this is equal to some power of t, we'll call it alpha, times f of simply x and y. And let's check if this f of x that I've given you does follow this. If I have f of x t comma y t, that means wherever I see an x, I'm going to write x t. And wherever I see a y, I'm going to write y t. If I go ahead and use some exponent rules, and then factor out my t cubed, I find that this is in fact equal to some power of t, in this case 3, times my original f of x y. That was up here. So this is actually homogeneous of degree 3. And the 3 comes from the exponent of the t. Notice if I added a plus 2 to this, with that plus 2, this would not be homogeneous. And you could go ahead and do the algebra to prove that to yourself. In general, the tests to see if something is homogeneous gets a little tedious, and oftentimes you're not asked to test to see if something is homogeneous. So this is going to look a little bit like what we did in terms of exact equations. If I can put something in this form and both m and n are homogeneous and they're both homogeneous with the exact same degree, then I'm going to be able to use a particular type of substitution. So if this is true, then I can do the following substitution. That is, I'm getting rid of my y's and rewriting everything in terms of just x and this new variable u. Just like when we talked about exact equations, I could either start with the m and go to the n, I could do the same thing here. I could use this substitution, where in this case I'm using v as my substitution, and this time it's x over y, and now I've written m and n in terms of y and v instead of u and x. I'll mainly be using this first substitution. And if you're like me, the first time I came across this, I thought, why? Why? Why would you ever want to rewrite what I had up here in terms of something like this? Why am I introducing this u to things? Well, let's look at why we might want to do this. I'm going to one more time show you why I can show that this is homogeneous. We already did x squared plus y squared. We found out that that was a degree 2 equation. And I'll do the same thing for this expression. If I let this equal n of x comma y, then n of x t y t is simply x t all squared minus x t y t, and that's equal to x squared t squared minus x y t squared. And again, I can factor out the t squared, and I end up with exactly what I had before in terms of what my n was equal to. So this is, in fact, homogeneous. I'm going to use my first substitution. That is, I'm going to let u equal y over x. If 
but I don't have any u's in here. If I'm trying to do a substitution, what I'm trying to do is put everything in terms of x and u. So I don't want y. So I actually want to take the substitution and rewrite it as y equals u times x. So anywhere I see a y, I'm going to replace it with u times x. And let's go ahead and do that. I've run into a problem here. I have a dy. I don't want any dy's, just like I don't want any y's. If this is equal to y, then dy, using the product rule, is simply u dx plus x du. And I'm going to use that for my dy. All right, so I've gone ahead and done my substitution. I didn't really need to pay attention to what was going on here. All I needed to do was remember what my substitution for u was. So now we're dealing with just a lot of algebra. And again, you're probably wondering why on earth I bothered to do all of this. Hopefully, by the time I'm done, you'll understand why. All right, I think I've got all my algebra correct, and now I'm going to see if I can combine like terms. Well, nicely, this and this add together to be 0. Now I'm going to collect all my dx's and all my du's. All right, and now it looks like I can factor out an x squared out of my first term and an x cubed out of my second term. And the question is, now what do I do? Well, looking at my u's and my x's, it looks like I might be able to separate these. Separating variables is a pretty easy way of solving differential equations. If I divide both sides by x cubed and divide both sides by 1 plus u, then I end up with the following equation. And I have now separated my variables. Well, this is one of the first things that you learn how to do in differential equations, solving separable equations. So let me clean up my negative 1 there. And I know the left-hand side is going to be pretty easy to integrate. What I'm going to do for this right-hand side is do some polynomial long division. Let me do this off to the side here. I'll have u minus 1, and then 1 plus u is going to divide into that. Of course, it would be much better to write it in terms of u plus 1 div divided into u minus 1. u goes into u one time, multiplying out and subtracting. I get 1 plus a remainder of negative 2. So I'm going to rewrite the right-hand side of this equation as 1 plus negative 2 over 1 plus u du. Now I'm going to integrate both sides, just like I would any time I'm separating variables. The left-hand side is just the natural log of x, and the right-hand side is simply u, because the integral of du is just u, minus 2 times the natural log of 1 plus u, and then we'll have our plus c. The trouble is this isn't going to get us real far in this form, because I don't want things in terms of u, I want things in terms of y. So we're going to resubstitute back now using that u is equal to y over x and see what we come up with. All right, when I have it like this, I'd like to combine all my natural logs together. And I'm going to do one other trick. Instead of c, I'm going to call this natural log of c. Okay, now officially it's a different c. It could be c1 and c2, but I can certainly take any constant and make it the natural log of a constant because we would find the actual value of this if we had some initial conditions. So when I rearrange things to put all the natural logs on one side, I'm going to use the power property of logarithms to take care of that too. Then I'm going to combine the 1 plus y over x into a single fraction. You notice I got a little bit sloppy with my absolute value bars, but if I'm squaring that, that's going to stay positive. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and combine this into a single logarithm. and then simplify. And as before, I'll take e to the both sides, and I'll get that e to the y over x equals x plus y all squared divided by c x. 
or multiplying this out, x plus y all squared is equal to cx e to the yx. And of course, we leave this in implicit form and not explicit form. So this is a problem we were able to solve using the substitution method that we would not have been able to solve otherwise. And by using that strange substitution, because this is a homogeneous equation, we're able to simplify this down to something that is merely a separable equation. Let's look at this equation. This doesn't look separable, and it is not linear because of the y cubed and the y squared. We could check for exactness, but I'm going to tell you, in fact, this is a homogeneous equation. So let's go ahead and get it in the form that we need to to solve a homogeneous equation. And now I'm going to use the substitution u equals y over x, or y equals ux, and dy equals u dx plus x du. So let's do some algebra. And now if I multiply this all out, I'm multiplying further, and I can now get rid of two terms that add to zero, and now I'm going to separate my variables. Now that I've separated my variables, I'm going to integrate both sides. Now I'll multiply both sides by 3, and at the same time move the natural log over to the left-hand side. Again, 3 times c is still a constant, so I'm just calling it another constant. Now I need to go back and substitute back from my u in terms of y. u is equal to y over x. I'll multiply through by x cubed. Now this is the general solution. I can find the c using my initial condition. And I find that c is equal to 8. So my particular solution is this. And I've left it in terms of an implicit form. So those are two examples using homogeneous equations. There's another type of equation we could look at, and that would be Bernoulli. A lot of differential equations is simply looking at the form of the differential equation, going through our recipe book, and trying to figure out what the best solution is, what's the best way to solve this problem, what's the best tool we can use. So we've talked about separable equations, we've talked about linear equations, we've talked about exact equations, and now homogeneous equations. If, however, you get a differential equation in this form, this part looks like a linear function, but the problem is the right-hand side has an f of x like we would for a linear equation, but this y to the nth power makes it nonlinear. Well, if it's in this form, we can do a different substitution method using Bernoulli's substitution, and that's simply letting u equal y to the 1 minus n, where n is the power of y. Let's do one a problem like this. For this, we'll have to do exactly what we did for linear equations and what we did for separation of variables. We need to get it in the correct form, and we need to do that by dividing out the x. When I divide out the x, I get dy dx plus 1 over xy equals 1 over x times y to the negative 2 power. I've gone ahead and, and written the right-hand side in terms of an exponent, just like we have in our model equation. So now I know that n is equal to negative 2. All I do is take this substitution, because I'm in the correct form, the best way to solve this, the easiest way to solve this, is just letting u equal y to the 1 minus n, which in this case is negative 2, or y is equal to the third power. So let's go ahead and do that substitution. First, let's look at y prime. Again, that's dy dx, which I can rewrite in this form. This is by the chain rule. I can rewrite dy dx as dy du times du dx. So let's find out what y prime is in this case. If u is equal to y to the third power, dy du can be found by rewriting this as y equals u to the one-third power. This is just like we did in the homogeneous substitution, where we had u equals y over x and we solved for y. Now we have u equals y cubed and we're solving it for y. So that means dy is simply equal to one-third u to the negative two-thirds power times du. Dividing both sides by du, we get that dy du is equal to one-third u to the negative two-thirds power. So that means we can rewrite y prime as one-third u to the negative two-thirds power times du dx. 
Now, leaving the x there is fine. What we're trying to do is get rid of y and rewrite it in terms of u. So that means we can rewrite this equation as such. 1 third u to the negative 2 thirds power du dx plus 1 over x, and instead of y, we're going to write u to the 1 third power. And then this equals 1 over x, and instead of the y to the negative 2 power, we'll write this as u to the 1 third power raised to the negative 2 power. Now, just like we did with substitution for homogeneous equations, we're going to just handle this with algebra. And I'm going to rewrite du dx simply as u prime. I'm going to divide both sides by 1 third u to the negative 2 thirds power. And hopefully what I just did didn't seem magical. If I am dividing both sides by 1 third u to the negative 2 thirds, that's the same thing as multiplying by 3 times u to the positive 2 thirds power. And you see that this u to the negative 2 thirds power goes away. And this u to the 1 third, you add to that u to the 2 thirds, which would give you a u. And now this is in linear form. So the previous substitution method, the homogeneous substitution method, gave us something that was separable. Bernoulli's equation, by doing the substitution, it makes it in terms of something that's linear. Again, these are both things that we know how to solve. So I would do the same thing that I would normally do. I'd say my px is equal to 3x. My integration factor, mu of x, would be e to the px dx, the integral of that, which in this case would be e to the 3, the integral of 1 over x dx, which would be equal to e to the 3, natural log of x. And using my power rule, and then knowing that e to the natural log of something is just whatever that something is, and my integration factor will be x to the third power. So just like I did for linear equations, I'm going to rewrite the left-hand side of this equation as d dx of mu of x times, well, in this case, we're going to use u instead of y. I'm going to try to make my mu's look very different than my u's. And I'm going to multiply the right-hand side of this equation also by my mu of x. Again, my mu of x is x cubed. This right-hand side simplifies to x squared with a 3 multiplied out front. And now I'm going to integrate both sides. And I will get x cubed u is equal to x cubed plus c. I'll divide through by x cubed. And finally, I'll use my substitution that u is equal to y cubed. And I have my final answer. So both of these methods are using a substitution that puts it into a form that we're already familiar with. The homogeneous substitution method brought it to a separable equation. Bernoulli's substitution brought it to a linear form.